Hi, this is Captain Drew Cavanaugh of Florida Inshore Fishing Charters and Mosquito Lagoon Site Fishing Charters located here in East Central Florida on the world famous Mosquito Lagoon, Indian River, up here in New Smyrna Beach, Cocoa Beach, Daytona, and Oak Hill, Florida, just east of Orlando and Disney. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain what exactly flats fishing is. Um, flats fishing is a generalized term, then once you're fishing the flats, from there you have several different ways to fish it. Think of it like hunting. When you hunt, that could encompass many different ways to hunt. Um, it's the same thing out here with fishing. When you're fishing, now, when you're fishing, you have many different ways to fish the flats. Um, so what we'll do here is let me first explain to you what flats fishing is. Flats fishing is basically a giant area that's a flat. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be landlocked or backcountry inshore like the lagoon. It can be a bay, an area, I mean, even out around you know the Keys down in South Florida. You might have access to the Gulf and Atlantic and you still have giant flats. Flats in generalized in my definition are an area that's flat as you're pushing the boat along. It just looks very flat, grass flats, sand holes, whatnot, no structure, and it's shallow. Shallow meaning anywhere from a few inches to a couple feet deep. Uh, just like the Mosquito Lagoon, the average depth is a couple feet, feet, three feet, two feet, three feet, four feet, some places. Two, three feet is my guess. Um, so that is flats fishing. Now it doesn't have to be salt water, it could be brackish. Um, I'm not super familiar with too many areas that are freshwater flats fishing, um, but flats fishing in general term encompasses saltwater fishing, um, whether it's for redfish, trout, black drum, snook, tarpon, uh, or what, or bonefish. Typically that's the key, that's the main goals uh, for fishermen to go when they say they're going flats fishing, is like an inshore saltwater species versus if you say big water, uh, big water is usually like out in the Atlantic, you know, 10 feet, 100 feet, 50 feet, 1,000 feet, 800 feet, you're trolling in big water. I'm a skinny water fisherman. Skinny, small, short, shallow. Big water, deep. So now, now that we've got the definition of what flats fishing is, let's talk about the many different ways to fish the flats. So this way, if you're coming out here to fish, or if you're looking into hiring a fishing guide, you can at this point in time know the questions you want to ask them or the questions you want to ask yourself. Uh, because there's certain ways that may be for you and there's certain ways that may not be for you, just like hunting. Um, think of it like this, you have many different ways to hunt. You have black powder, you have rifle, you have bow. Um, you, could, you could trap them, you could you know, hunt with a spear. So there's many different ways. You got hunters that use bait, hunters that stalk them, hunters that sit in a tree stand, hunters that walk the field with dogs, so on and so forth. So out here, I specialize in light tackle inshore sight fishing, whether it's with fly fishing gear or spin fishing gear. Typically my main targeted fish is the Mesquita Lagoon redfish, Indian River redfish, uh, sea trout, black drum. Um, we do get the seasonal snook and tarpon that come in here. We're starting to have tarpon come in now, the migratorial species that come in here when the water's warmer. So when I'm saying sight fishing, I'm doing exactly what that sounds like. I'm out there pushing the boat along the flat, the grass flats or whatever. I mean, there could still be, when I say no structure, I mean underneath the water structure. Like you're not going to look down and see, you know, uh, rocks and boulders and caves and sunken sailboats and all that. It's too shallow. And that's just not the way it is out here. Um, we're pushing along a grass flat and we're physically looking for fish. And I might say, hey, we have two red fish 30 feet in front of us at uh, 2 o'clock. One's facing away from us, the other one's moving pretty good click once you go for that one. We're physically sight fishing for these. Um, typically when you sight fish, you are um, making casts to individual fish or schools of fish. The past several weeks, you know, we've seen some, I've showed clients thousands upon thousands of fish on a daily basis. And so you get numerous shots at them. Just like a hunter, they may see hundreds and thousands of ducks in the air or deer in a field. Doesn't mean they're going to get every single one, you know. That's just fishing in general all over on the planet. So when you sight fish, we're going out there and we're targeting fish and we're looking for them. Now, that's typically what I prefer to do um, 
just um, that's what I specialize in. Now the other ways to fish is you have blind casting, you have chumming, you have bait fishing, you have um, you know fly fishing and spin fishing, different kinds of tackle you can use, so on and so forth. So let's talk about the blind casting part of it. Blind casting is exactly what that seems like it is. It's just blindly casting. You will go out there and you're just guessing, 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 throwing, 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 hoping something will hit it. A lot of times if it's clear out, as I'm pushing the boat, the sun's at my back, the sun's in the fish's eyes, I can see out there in the water. I don't know if the camera can see out there in the water right there in the lake right here. Um, but I can see the deep hole out there, I can see all the lily pads. So if, I, if I'm in 20 inches of water and I see fish swimming, I can see them. So if you're sitting there blind casting, you're just blindly doing that. You're just willy-nilly and guessing. Here's another hunting analogy. The hunter just doesn't go out into the, into the woods and I know there's trees over there. I know there's trees behind me here. I just don't start shooting into the trees everywhere hoping to hit something. No, you acquire your target, you sight your target in, then you take it down. The same thing with sight fishing. I prefer to do that. Now there are times that blind casting will come into play. One of those times is clouds if the visibility's down, low light situations, um, slow days, whatever. So there are times you will do that, but typically I'm not going out there blind casting all day. A lot of people will do that. They'll just go up and down bars and blind cast the deep ledges, the five, six foot of water, and throw a thousand times to each their own. More power to you, my friend. So that's one way you can fish the flats. So you have fish in the flats, then you break it down into subject, into, into categories on how to fish the flats. You have sight fishing, blind casting. The next thing is you have bait fishing. To me, that's almost like blind casting. You go out there, you find an area, you want to put the bait out there. You could sit for days and something might come by or something might come by right away. Why not get up and look around for these fish and then cast them? Because I have, and there's times I've had clients say, Captain, if you brought bait, we would have caught those fish. Well, I'll put bait on and I'll still show them fish and they still don't catch them. And do you know why? Because when you're throwing to fish, if your lure is 100 feet away from the fish, they're not going to see it or eat it. You still got to get the bait to them, whether it's plastic, artificial, block, rock, whatever, you know, <laughs> the tail does not eat. So that's a given. Um, there are times that you can go out there and if you know areas where the fish come through and whatnot, you can put out bait. Um, there's guys that come out here and they chum the water. You know, they'll put down chum blocks or they'll cut up mullet pieces and throw it out there. And, you know, then they'll put out bait or then they'll start blind casting. So that's another way to fish the flats. So that's your overview here on, for those of you that are interested and say, what is sight fishing, you know? Um, you know, or what is flats fishing? What, in, what encompasses flats fishing? Listen, flats fishing is very fun. It is very easy to do. It's not rocket science. It's one of the, it's one of the most pleasurable experiences you can do, your family can do. Anybody can get out there and do. There's just different levels of it. Um, it it's, it's very easy to do. It's very can be accomplished by any person um, most of the time throughout the year. Uh, weather related, of course, but you know what? That's going to be with anywhere you fish on the earth. Weather is going to play into a factor of anywhere you fish, northern or the southern hemisphere. And that's just called fishing. Why it's called fishing is not catching. So, I hope that helps you out. Um, any of those out there, you out there that have questions or comments or anything, feel free. You can call me. You can email me. I'll be happy to answer any questions whatsoever. So that right there in a nutshell is what is flats fishing. Flats fishing encompasses sight fishing, bait fishing, blind casting, so on and so forth. And there was just one more thing I wanted to touch on. When you're flats fishing, you can use artificial or live bait or fly fishing um but i think that was a given i think everybody pretty much understood that so again i want everybody to have a great day this is captain drew cavanaugh of florida inshore fishing charters and thank you